post All Star Break edition yes. of the Steam Room. Charles Barkley and Ernie Johnson, thanks for being with us, you loyal steamers. Good to be back uh, in, oh, it, in Atlanta it after is. Uh, what five days in Salt Lake City. We were out yeah, there, uh, you know. And thank shout out to all the people in Salt Lake City. They had uh, Chamber of Commerce weather. We yeah. got lucky weather-wise. Yeah, it was, it was cold, the, but it wasn't. Yeah, but uh, now all hell's breaking the loose. The day you after the, we left. I know. You remember what, two was, feet? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Something like that. So shout out to Salt Lake City. Speaking of that, uh, here on the table, take a look at these, at these Chuckster. Um, shout out to Rachel from Salt Lake City, who's a loyal steamer. Uh, and who is a big fan of our show on well, clearly, TNT. She's a fan of yours. Well, well I mean, you got, I got Elevator Ernie Johnson. I got EJ's Neostat. Yeah. I got uh, a- Well, a, a couple of them a, may a have bow, been eaten. A bow tie. Yeah. I got this Georgia crap. Yeah. Look at, look at the, here, did you see the check? This, see, she's a loyal viewer, and she remembers the Jussie Smollett situation. And what was your advice? Don't write a check. Yeah. Well, look at the check. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> to, to the muggers. To the muggers. <laughs> um, keep, so, me, keep your tile on. Oh, she's she yeah. talented, man. Yeah. Had those maids oh. specially what, for what's, us. What's her name again? Rachel. Rachel. Rachel, so, thank so you. So for the crew, you know, you can dive in, eat eat, eat some of these uh, great cookies. Thank and, you, uh, Rachel. That yeah. was very kind. It was very sweet. And uh, so uh, we all doing the first oh, of all. One, one more thing. Uh-oh. How about this? Evolution about of Excellence. Is that the Kareem jacket? A gift from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Is that from you? That's for me. Yeah, we all got them. Yeah. Aren't, isn't that nice? Yeah, that's nice. That's, Sweet. That's going to be a nice addition. I like that. Oh, I like it a lot. Thank you, Kareem. Thanks, Kareem. Um, great. So it's it's always fun to come back from All-Star and then uh, show off stuff yeah. that we yeah. may have gotten. Um, but that's cool. It was a great weekend. It was. Um, so... First of all, there's some stuff for you to dive into here. There's a lot first going on. That's a lot going on. Um, you got your sheet? You got your notes? I got my notes. Okay. Uh, first Good. of all, I want to thank every single person who sent me a text. I haven't gotten back to everybody, so don't take it personally. But thanks to everybody who sent me a text. On your 60th on birthday? The big 6-0. How's it feel there, Biggin? It feels great, brother. I know. Six years. Well, and and shout out to my daughter. All I wanted to do was spend the day with my grandson. She let me have a little man, and it was a perfect day. Yeah. yeah. And, and now you're having another one, right? Yeah, she's pregnant yeah. again. Yeah. They're getting it in. How's Because Henry's like 10, 11 months, and she's like five months pregnant. I mean, damn. Take a night off, y'all. <laughs> Take a night off. Hey, shout out to my son, Eric, too, because uh, he and Quinn just had their third child, wow. our fifth grandchild, wow. little, little Adler, little boy. Adler, okay. Adler yeah. I, I like and that. And he's awesome. Yeah, and, Adler. Uh, so, yeah, so this grandparent thing just keeps on, yeah, it's the greatest keeps on going, You're right, man. Honey, you, you and Clark Kellogg told me it was going to be amazing. And we were right. You were right. Now, you used to say it. Well, okay, I'm used to saying it. Right. Not, not often, but go ahead. So... I want to give a couple of condolences. Two people. One is a friend of mine, Howard Bragman. Uh, you might not know the name, but if, if you're in Hollywood circles, he's kind of a uh, he was kind of a, a crisis guy for uh, Hollywood types. And I met him a few years ago and stayed in contact with him. And he passed away last week or so. And I just want he was one of the nicest guys that I'd met. We weren't extremely close, but I consider him a friend. We talked uh, occasionally. Excuse my asking, but what is a Hollywood crisis guy? Like when a celebrity get in trouble. Okay. He na helps you navigate, like, this is what we should do. This is what we shouldn't do. I got you. And uh, I met him, and, man, he was fabulous. And me and my agent spent some time with him. And uh, shout out to Mark, my agent. And uh, I just wanted to acknowledge his passing. was just a good dude and going to be missed. And the second one is Red McCombs. Yeah. The San Antonio Spurs owner. You know, so interesting. Uh, I got a, a phone call from the, the Spurs way back when I was playing. It says, Mr. McCombs want to say hello to you. I'm like, sure. And he just, he, he pulled me aside. He said, I just want to tell you, I'm a big fan. I love watching you play. And I was like, what? I thought it was something serious. 
He's not. I just wanted to acknowledge you, how great of a player you are. You seem like a nice guy. and Always nice to have something like is. that from one of, from somebody, one of your peers, but somebody from another organization. Yes. Who, so who uh, out. shout out to the McCombs family. He lived a great long life. I think he said he was 94, 95. And uh, I just want to acknowledge those two guys. Howard, rest in peace. Mr. McCombs, rest in peace. So this next thing is it's really been bugging me, the Tiger Woods situation. You know, uh, Tiger to me is the greatest golfer ever. Shout out to Jack Nicklaus, who is right there. Nothing but love and respect for Jack Nicklaus. But in my opinion, just my opinion, Tiger's the GOAT. But I was deeply disturbed how people overreacted uh, to, the, to the tampon joke situation. When he handed it. To Justin Thomas as a joke. Secretly. Secretly. I mean, yeah. And after he had outdriven yes, JT. Uh, we got, uh, I'm disgusted that he apologized. I'm not going to lie. Um, these people, and you know who you are, these people who all of a sudden want to try to counsel. I ain't never tried to counsel anybody. If somebody make a mistake, apologize, keep it moving. But I don't know where we got to the point where we can't even tell jokes anymore. And I'm not going to let that happen on my watch and just sit back out of it and let people do that. So, Tiger, you're the GOAT. You should not have apologized. And for you big mouth people out there, if y'all want to get mad about something, get mad about the lack of black coaches in the NFL. Now, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of talking about this every year. Not one year, not two years. We talk about it every single year. Listen, uh, I'm not even going to beg. I'm just saying do the right thing. Give some of these coaches a chance. Steve Wilkes should have kept the job in Carolina. He went 6-6 six and six after Matt Rule got fired. I have a question for you. Sure, brother. What is it about Eric Bieniemy that is holding him <laughs> back from a head coaching job? Why does he have to take a lateral move to the commanders as an offensive coordinator and assistant head coach when everyone looks at his resume and says, this guy should be a head coach in the NFL. Ernie, uh, talking to all the black coaches, which I do quite a bit, there's no right, there's no rhyme or reason. So that nobody you talk to has an answer there's for no this. There's no answer whatsoever. But not just him. I mean, he's won two out of the last four Super Bowls. Been to five straight NFC, AFC yeah. championship game. He can't get a sniff. He can't get a sniff. And I'm just sick of talking about this subject because there's no reason, there's no good reason Eric B. Enemy shouldn't have a job. Steve Wilkes, uh, Raheem Morris, who – who won the Super Bowl last year as the defensive coordinator with the Rams. He didn't even get a sniff of a head coaching job. We we know the we obviously know the situation with Brian Flores. You know, he just took the job in Minnesota. Uh, but man, if you these people gonna go off on Tiger on some of this insignificant and just a joke. And like I say, just a joke. And like I say, Tiger, you should not have apologized. But if you big mouth people are offended about something, uh, be offended about stuff that's really important. That's just my opinion. I don't have a problem with Tiger apologizing. I don't. I don't know that it was totally necessary, but it's brought up to him, and he's like, oh, "Okay." Um, and but it was one of you know, if you were offended, then I'm then I'm sorry about it. Well, are, are but, people uh, offended about yeah, everything? I, I know they are, and and my point is, look, if they. We know there are cameras everywhere. We know there are microphones everywhere. If Tiger was walking up the fairway with Justin Thomas, you know, unleashing some diatribe against women in sports, yeah. then it would be like, hey, you got to answer for this. But we, we're we living in this age now where you and I can't have a joke. I know. You, know, you know, it's like, look, everybody in the world knows. And men on their tour hit the ball farther than women on their tour. That is the crux of a joke from Tiger to Justin Thomas. And and really, are we are we to that point where you can't where, joke that, at all. where that has to be, hey, we gotta make this this is gonna be a story. When we have all this other stuff going on around us that's kind of like That's what bothers me yeah, the most. Yeah. That's I mean, what bothers me the most. Because when then when you say, Well, look at the shooting at Michigan State. Oh my goodness. Look at the situation at Alabama. 
with and and it's like it's like do we really want to spend all this energy on Tiger's stupid joke to Justin Thomas? Yes. So you know, Ernie, I'm finna get uncomfortable right now. In my 23 years on television and, and even on our podcast, I always try to be honest and I always try to be fair. That does not mean I'm right all the time. But, man, I'm really uncomfortable about the Alabama situation. Um, you know. Are you, are you, why are you uncomfortable? I mean, are you uncomfortable as an Auburn guy talking no, about an Alabama ta- situation? Talking or about you- young kids. Yeah. I, I, first of all, you know, there, there's some fool who listen to the podcast because uh, I've said before, Alabama's the best team in the country. Houston's the second best team. Those are the two best teams. I said that two months ago. I said, yeah. Alabama's the best team I've seen play. Houston probably the second best team I've seen play. Haven't changed their opinion on it at all. But there's some fool going to say, yeah, Charles don't want this. Charles going at this kid because he went to Auburn. First of all, it has nothing to do with it. A young lady lost her life. Yeah, let's fill in a couple of blanks yeah, here, yes. too. For folks who don't, yeah. who are saying, what are they talking about in the Alabama situation? Darius Miles, Alabama basketball player, kicked off the team. Uh, and he and a, and a man named Michael Davis uh, could face capital murder charges in the death of Jamia Harris yes. over a shooting on the Alabama campus mm-hmm. where she was visiting um, a friend. Uh, she is a she is a mother of a five year old. She was shot, um, and apparently, apparently, silliness. apparently, uh, and according to the court transcripts, Darius Miles, the Alabama basketball player, had given the gun to Michael Davis, and then it comes out that Darius Miles had gotten the gun from Brandon Miller. Probably the best freshman in the country. He's the best freshman. And right now, he's going in the top five of the NBA draft. Yeah. So. So those that's all the background. And that's and, and that's led to this week, Nate Oates, their head coach, oof. talking about the situation. And, and re, you know, and then he had to go back and apologize, apologize. because it came out so badly. Yes. And especially the especially the phrase, well, Brandon Miller, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. My uncomfortable is trying to play God, judge, and jury when you have a platform. If if that kid. Which kid? Brandon. Mm-hmm. Who's the best freshman. On the team that is a favorite to win the whole thing this year. Yes. If that kid, Brandon, who's, like I say, I personally think he's the best player in the country. That's my opinion. If that kid gave that other kid the gun, I don't know if we can let him play. Uh, I hate saying that, but if that kid gave that, and listen, I've discussed this with my friends. I says, if a friend of mine came and asked me for a gun, I said, dude, what you need a gun for? Like, I wouldn't just give a person a gun because they asked me for a gun. Like, that's a real thing. And like I say, I'm uncomfortable saying this. I don't know if we can let him play. I, I see what you're saying, Chuck. Yeah. Because, look, if I'm if I'm the AD um, at Alabama, if I'm the athletics director, yeah. and this is going on in my program, and I know there were no criminal charges against Brandon Miller. And and as it's explained, there's nothing he could be charged with according to Alabama law. But at the same time, a, a story of this magnitude, don't you need to step back? Don't you need to say, look, we're going to dig into this. And yeah. in the meantime, he's not playing. Yeah. But apparently that's that was not the direction it's, they chose to go. Yeah. it's It's a tough one, man, because Man, this young lady's dead. And I just, I don't understand the stupidity of how, if 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 what they said is true, I read what the girl's mother said. That right. It started because the guy tried to go out with her and she said no. She wasn't interested. And yeah. I, I want to know how you get from, I don't want to go on a date with you, to dead. Like, 
And like I said a couple months ago, man, these young kids, man, when y'all make decisions, they're really, really life altering. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing too. It was the thought, and then the where can I get a gun? I can get you a gun. I mean, there's plenty of there's all that time to say, is this really what is yeah. this really what we want to do? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, man, and and so. This this is all according to wrong, what to Bob. what we've it's, read and what we're here you know what we've heard of published reports and it, it's just wrong it's, on so and many it's tragic levels. it's tragic she lost her life and your thoughts your prayers go out to her family it's a senseless loss yes and and then you this kid has ruined his life yeah he's going to jail forever and now Brandon's gonna have to like. Yo, man, you, you, you got to say something. He, he, to me, to me, he has to say, hey, you know what? Uh, I was wrong or I didn't do it. I did not give him a gun or he got to say, hey, you know what? I take full responsibility. I need to take a step back and look at myself. I mean, I, and then, man, I, I just feel such sadness because... This kid is such a spectacular player, but if he did do that, that's one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, regrettable all around. Yes, that's for sure. That's for sure. What else you got on that sheet of paper? That's it, over brother. There? I think that's enough. That's enough. Yeah, that's man. That's more we're than supposed enough. to be having fun. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this: we will be having fun today. We do not have a guest on this show, but you know what? We do have still to come in just a bit. The largest Chuck's answering machine segment wow. ever, ever, says Michael Kaplan, our producer. We've never had so many calls, and there's a special surprise at the very end of the podcast. Uh-oh. Let's Is do that it, a tease? Brother. Let's do it. Is that a tease? Thank you, Rachel, for the cookies. Yeah, they're awesome. Let's Legendary, legendary. Tim Kiley's in the house. Keep your towel on. In the hey, steam room. I'm going to let him call you a legend today. All right, thank you. Thanks for my birthday gift. Hey, you're welcome. I hope that yeah. maybe we'll have a little uh, yeah. little toot after the yes, uh, exactly show. Right. Ain't, uh, you're ready uh, for What'd that. you get him? Uh, it's a year. <laughs> 1942 tequila. It's a year. Oh, oh okay. Yes, yeah, a year, Ernie. <laughs> Wasn't a gram of anything. Yes, it, <laughs> I was a little concerned there, Legend. Um, I have my Great hand. to have you with us. And you know what? He's going to be back in the chair tonight. Yes. Doing the show. Doing Inside the you NBA. Are? Yeah. Oh, man. It must yeah. be nice to work when you want to. It oh, is. Well, you know, the young guys take a day off. Yeah. The old fart has to work. Okay. Yeah. Hey, brother. Chuck, we- I have breaking news. Uh-oh. And it concerns your earlier comments about Salt Lake City and how nice they were and how great the weather was. Yes. When, in fact, you killed Salt Lake City for its, quote, Lack of fun. No, 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 and, no, no. And, and Shaq commented that he's never hating so much room service in his life. Now, we have a tweet. Uh-oh. Just wait. We have a tweet from owner Ryan Smith of the Jazz. He jabbed back. Charles lives in a hotel and orders room service three times a day. Two-part question. Your real take on Salt Lake, and what are you ordering in room service? Uh, first of all, I did not order room service one time. Shaq uh-huh. said he did a lot of yeah, room service. I, I, I enjoyed Salt Lake City. I was saying there was not a lot of alcohol flowing. <laughs> that's all I said. Can't you have fun without alcohol, Charles? Uh, that would be a hard no. That would be a hard damn no. That would be a hard no. Um, oh, um, man. And I said Shaq was upset because they didn't have hookah because he <laughs> loves hookah. I thought he uh, brought his own. He, he can't get that much. But – I actually love Salt Lake City. Our, our hotel was fabulous. Had a great time. The, the weather was fabulous. I was just joking. I'm saying these. First of all, I said all the people that are going to heaven. I I know. I heard it. Why can't they take it as a compliment? Well, some people are thin skin. Ryan, hey Ryan, stop it, man! I had a great time in your city. Great. It was great. Yeah. Spending a little time with Ryan Smith too. Yes. Um, and I think he was joking. And and I'm not a big room service guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, I have to ask both you guys your thoughts on this situation. What's up with Aaron Rodgers? Uh, I believe he's still in his four-day hiding in a cave. Have you heard this, Ernie? Uh, you're going to have to enlighten me. Yeah, he does this dark thing where he goes in darkness for like a long period of time okay. to get clarity in his okay. life. I like Aaron Rodgers. You can call that uh, different or eccentric or whatever, but yeah. hanging out with him a little bit at the uh, at the match last year? Yeah. Had a great time with Aaron Rodgers. I don't know him that well. He's always been cordial. There are a lot of people in that I wish would go spend four days in a in the dark somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but, but 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 I will say this: as a fan of the Packers or or an executive of the Packers, I really think I don't think he's fair to them. You know, Ernie, the fans they love their team. They want to know who's going to be on their team. Blah, blah, blah. But as far as an executive, you can't act like you're going to come pl- go play, not play all the time. It's not fair to the rest of the players. He has to build a team. I understand the frustration with the Green Bay Packers. I'm like, yo, man, we love you. You're a great player. But we need to know something. We need to know something as soon as possible. I mean, that's exactly what happened with uh, Devontae Adams. He's like, yo, I can't wait on this dude. Arguably the best receiver in football says, this dude, I don't know if he's going to play this year or next year. So I can understand the frustration from the Green Bay Packers. Do you think you could go sit in a cave for four days? Hell no. How long could you last in a dark cave? <laughs> uh, Great question, Ernie. Probably two two hours. I bet you couldn't last two hours in a dark cave. Well, first of all, how the hell am I in a dark cave? Doing some thinking. You've already been Being so- alone with your thoughts. So you, you don't have enough thoughts to be in there for I, two I, hours. You lasted a whole night in jail. I was only in there like eight hours. That seemed like an eternity. Oh, all right. And you had a cellmate. <laughs> and, no, I didn't. No, oh, no, didn't. no, no. That was not, no. <laughs> I did not have a cellmate. Nice try, Ernie. Nice try. I did the, America, Ernie's trying to, he's trying to shade me. I, did not, I, I, know. I, I, was, just, in a, I was in this by cell by myself. Which time? <laughs> Every time? Every time. Every I'm time. Not, <laughs> Every time. All right, last thing. I, I uh, understand that we're, we're about to hit the longest uh, answering machine segment yes, in the history are. of the show. But yeah. I have a, an answering machine, if, I, if you guys wouldn't mind. Uh, this is for you guys to listen and answer. So, Cap, roll the tape. Hey, how's it going, Ernie? How's it going, Charles? Loyal Steamer here from Chicago, Illinois. My name is Teddy. Question for you. I need a good laugh this uh, afternoon. After the commercial break happens on Inside the NBA, I would love to hear one of the most hilarious stories that you have. Has there ever been a cut to commercial where you, Shaq, and the Jet have had just phenomenal interaction, something hilarious behind the scenes that we've never seen. Um, I would love to just be cheered up on this day. Thank mm-hmm. you, guys. Well, I, I, I know where I'm going, uh, but I'm not going, I'm going there. Hey, it, it, Most of them involve Shaq. Yeah. Well, I'm telling but, stories but, from it, his past. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. The thing is really fun. Ernie is hilarious behind the scenes. And to be honest with you, Ernie's clean cut. But half the stuff that me and Shaq say, we can't say on the podcast. We can't even say it on on true TV. You can't even say it in the hallway. You can't even say it if you're sitting in a cave by yourself. That's exactly right. But, man, it is so much fun to be at work because, we first of all, we have a bunch of games on. So it's stupid stuff happening in other games. But I will tell you this. It's hilarious behind the scenes. The, gr- the green room is hilarious. Uh, watching Shaq do his thing is incredible. But uh, I'm just telling you, man, we can't tell you, not even half no, the stuff. No, we, no. We I mean, it's a great ta- question. Great question. But it's unanswerable. Well, yeah. I, got, I actually can answer two real quick. Um, the time you messed up Ernie's notes. Yeah, that was bad. That, yeah, that, that was a bad. That was yeah. Kenny's fault. Move on. Yeah. That was Kenny's fault. I know. Fault. I, know. Told I know. To do it. So, Move on. I don't like to think about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the other one was, uh, which is one of my favorite of all time, and where I think we excel 
is when something does happen in between commercials, we show it right out of the break. Mm -hmm. uh, Ernie always says, just a moment ago, this happened. And Charles got a cramp. Oh, and, yeah. And oh, my goodness. This is not the Shaq oh, cramp. That, I do the remember Kenny, that. The Kenny cramp, when you cramped up, and Kenny said, grab your upper lip, it'll oh, no. go away. Yeah, squeeze <laughs> your upper lip. Squeeze your upper lip. And there you are with one hand on a you hand and the your other foot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you, one that actually just happened recently. Shaq, Shaq thinks he's got the best body in the world, so he's always walking around half naked. So about, uh, about two weeks, three weeks ago, he runs up behind me almost naked. And he says, yo, man, we got like 12 million hits. And what happened was, I didn't know he had the camera rolling, and everybody in the room fell out laughing. This dude running up behind me half naked. Don't be running up behind me naked with your big old ass. World's largest 12-year-old. No, I like, I said, yo, man, put some clothes on if you're going to walk up behind me like that. So stuff like that happens all the time. Perhaps Shaq could consider four days in a cave. That would be that, that would be without a, hookah. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> if you get no, if, if he had hookah, it'd we be would eight never, days in a cave. We never see him again. He'd yeah, dig exactly. his way to China. That's exactly right. He <laughs> would, we, if he could smoke hookah in a cave and not be bothered, we would never see him. Uh, All right, good. legend. That was uh, that was it, awesome. Chris. You got anything else for us? No, just uh, can't wait to hear the uh, longest answering machine thing oh, this, should be, is, this should be good i, I, I can't wait either Way i think to it's going to be do some work that's it and it's also going to have a special guest appearance uh -oh. not an interview but uh, a surprise for you uh -oh. that's like a cameo Arnie, to make yeah. a movie yeah cameo it would be a cameo as a well you're already getting ready for the night i'm ready <laughs> all right the uh, the world's longest uh chuck's answering machine segment coming up next on the steam room Chuck and Ernie in steam room. Come and join us in the steam room. Chuck and Ernie in the steam room. Leave your towel on in the steam room. Chuck and Ernie in the steam room. Chuck and Ernie in the steam room. Leave your towel on in the steam room. You enjoy the way you sing that. When, I, I when you sing along with you singing along. You know, it's just, I told you, that's why they call me old I brown know it eyes. is. I know it is. So, as we hyped earlier... I'm what so glad we got What follows here it's is the awesome. largest Chuck's answering machine segment in the history of the segment. And this is season four of the Steam Room. Damn. So, what did the four years go? Oh, uh, I don't know. The days, uh, the days don't walk, they run, Chuckster. Oh, my goodness. Put that on a card, Hallmark card. In the immortal words of Chris Smith, or great blues guitarist, been around a while and I just recently stumbled onto his music, and he is outstanding. Chris Smither. Hey, enough about all this. Uh, what do you say we jump into some uh, some of these phone yes. calls? And at 404-987-0334. Okay, <laughs> How okay. long have we been doing this? 404-987-0330. Call number one. Hello, world. This is Charles Barkley. Leave me a message. Hey, fellas. Stav here, original loyal steamer <laughs> from Australia. Charles, I'm calling to wish you all the best on your 60th birthday, or kronia bola, as we say in Greek. Every year for my birthday, I don't get gifts because I don't need them. But my wife, the sweetheart that she is, makes me a pavlova every year. Delicious, or more accurately, a stavlova, as she calls it. Chuck, I know you don't care much for gifts at your age either, but I'm curious, as you look ahead to your grandson Henry's first birthday, what are you thinking of getting the little guy? Happy birthday, mate. Stav is always... He's great. Yeah. I think Chuck's answering machine must be like on speed dial from him from no, Australia. No, but I think, I, think, uh, I think he was our first caller. He's yeah. the best. Yeah, I think he was the first I loyal mean, steamer. And as I'm dehydrated here... He's still Wait, begging for that Aussie beer. I, you know, he'd been bragging about that beer for four years. I, I mean, know. the pandemic is over, technically. It's supply chain issue. It's supply, okay, okay. Um, I had this, What's uh, the best thing you got for your birthday, by the way? Uh, the best thing, I got to spend a half a day with my little man. Okay. So what are you going to get him for his first birthday, which comes up when? March. It's in the middle of March Madness. Okay. He, I think he was born, like, because I was in Vermont... 
And I went straight down either the first week or second week to start March Madness. So coming up. Okay. I'm probably not going to get him anything. Like Christmas. You're treating his birthday like Christmas. Well, well, you said he shouldn't get anything. He's too young to understand gifts at this point. So I'm probably just going to put some more money into his college tuition. Because it's going to be like a million dollars by the time that he goes to college. So, like, but my thing is, for Christmas, he spent more time looking at the wrapping paper than did the gifts. So I'm like, at one, he's not going to be the same either. So... I, ah, you're you're underselling that a little bit. Well, because you know you got one year olds. They love the cake. They love to play in the cake. Yeah, they love well, to, a birthday you know, cake is play not a with gift. stuff. Well, right, so so kids uh, a year old or under should not be given toys to play with. A toy, yeah. or one or two, one or two yeah. little, little things, but don't give them like a bunch of things. Because number one, you know, like if somebody gets you a bunch of stuff, you're gonna fall in love with one gift. So I'm probably just gonna get some money toward his tuition. Uh, you know, because I don't know if he's gonna have the grades to go to Auburn. Uh, a little earlier to, to know at this point. Yes. His mom and dad are smart though, but I can mm -hmm. pull some strings to get him into Auburn. Ah, all right. Yes. All right, Grandpa. Well done. All right. Next call. Hey, Ernie and Chuck. Loyal Steamer from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Question for Chuck. What is the weirdest gift that you received? We all remember the infamous loci bracelet from the steam room, but is there anything else that's weird or memorable that stood out to you? I'll hang up and listen. Thanks. This is, this, is, this is a much bigger picture. This is the greatest gift of all time. It doesn't have to be for a specific. Well, you know, I, I got great friends. Most of my friends actually just give me watches because I collect watches. I got like 120 watches. Mm -hmm. So watches always work for me. You know, my mother and grandmother uh, are both have passed away. They always get me like draws and socks. Yeah, uh, we already know the draws story. Yeah, don't wear draws. Uh, the socks are actually not bad. Um I don't wear a cologne. Uh, you wear cologne? No. Okay. Yeah, it's always weird. Like a couple of times people giving me cologne. I've never worn cologne in my life. And you never wear sunglasses either. I do not wear sunglasses. Uh, yeah, I do not. But i tell you what, though. I'm hitting that ball right now. Oh, good. I whooped the hell out of Roy this week. Did you really? Oh, bro, it wasn't even close. We He was dormant by like 13. I would think that would be probably some of the best gifts you've ever gotten, stuff that's golf-related, like oh, like probably manufacturers have, uh, the, have given the, you the, sticks. The, the sticks, like I'm sticking with my sticks I'm using. Now. I'm a pain guy now. I'm, yep. I'm repping Love pain. Uh, the, the, the balls are always good. You can't ever go wrong with those Pro-Vs. Pro-V1, Pro-V1X. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm not good enough to know the difference. Yeah. So, uh, but they I like, all look alike in the woods to me. That's exactly right. <laughs> but yeah, but man, I, it was a really cool thing. I got some really nice stuff, but nothing spectacular. All right. Next call. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Ernie. Veronica from Phoenix, longtime teamer. Chuck, I just watched the movie Whiplash over the weekend, and I see now why Ernie wants you to watch the movie. You can totally relate to the main character as an elite athlete and being pushed to the edge by an instructor, maybe a coach. Great recommendation, Ernie. I highly recommend it to everyone out there. Uh, question for Chuck. Chuck, I Googled the Black Masters 2023. That is on my bucket list, and I don't see a date. Do you have a date yet, and do you have a list of players that are signed up to play? Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Ernie. Not yet. We uh, we always kind of wait and see how the playoff schedule shakes out because yes. that's the time to do it is yes. sometime in April, uh, usually on a Thursday because we will have worked the day before. So a Thursday or a Friday in late April before we go on the road. Yep. And I know Grant Hill, I saw Grant the other day, he says, pencil me in for the Black Masters. I want to be there. And it, it will be, we know it'll be at beautiful uh, the, the legends of the legend. Chateau Alain. Yes, we do. Let me just say this. The only thing I care about is Grant Hill and Steve Smith. Chico's a coward. Chico not going to be here. He's a coward. But let me tell you something. Grant Hill and Steve Smith, I hate those two dudes, man. They talk so be much. Be nice, man. Dude, I'm telling you. They send me videos of their swing all the time. Yeah. Grant is a range warrior. He's always on the range. He never sends me pictures from the golf course. But I hate both of those guys. They send me pictures and talk trash all the time. Ernie. 
I'm not afraid of those two dudes at all. I'm going to beat them down. I'm yeah. playing great. I know you are. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I've been spreading that news to everybody who asks, yeah. you know, because some folks are still under the impression that you're doing all that wacky stuff you used to do and, and couldn't get the ball around the, around the golf course. And yeah. I said, no, things have changed. The guy plays every day. His game is back. And I'm happy to see it because I know you love the game yeah. and it's a lot more fun when it's, you're keeping it in play. Yes. Um, and, but there is, there is a, a strange phenomenon, Chuckster. Uh, and I, I, I bet you've had it at some point in your golf career too, where something happens in between that driving range and that first tee, something falls out of the cart. I don't know what it is where you, where you're out there, you're striping it. And it's like, man, my swing is good today. I cannot wait to play. Yeah. And then, boo, and it's like. How did that happen? I didn't hit one ball like that on the range, and here on the first tee, there it is. There's a couple of things that Stan has. Stan Utley. Stan Utley, my teacher. He made me start playing golf more. I was scared to play golf. Like, I'd go to the range for five or six hours mm -hmm. and just hit balls, just bang balls, just bang balls. And he'd be like, Chuck, are you scared to play golf? I said, no. He says, well, why do you practice so much and not go play? And I was like, Oh, that's interesting. But I figured out I was scared to play. Yeah. So the, one of the first things he did to me, he's now we're going to play, we're going to go on the golf course. And does he suggest, hey, we're going on the golf course and you're going to play with other guys? Yes. Because, but, because part of the thing is, man, I don't want to, these guys can all play and I'm going to drag everybody no, but down. The, and the, I, no, you know. but then go, go back to the range thing you're talking about. When I go to the range now, I practice a lot less and play more. But – I, I pick out targets on the range. Mm -hmm. He said, "He said, don't just go to the range and just hit it. There's like, got to be a purpose behind every gotta, swing. Yes. And I'm going to hit the guy uh, in the, in the uh, car. Oh, I love aiming at the guy in the in little the, buggy. The yeah. I love that. Uh, but he said, hey, pick out targets, man. Don't just be hitting at the world. And so a couple things that simple. He said, you got to go on the golf course. So he's been great in that aspect. All right. Um, that's probably more golf talk than we thought we were going to have, but here's the next call. Hey, y'all. Long-time listener, loyal steamer. That sounds like my son, Eric. two-time Black Masters champion. Oh, my goodness. I'm <laughs> calling here, uh, thinking about the most important dates in my life, my wedding, the birth of my three children, and my two Black Masters championships. Hope you guys are doing well. <laughs> and I can't wait to claim my third. Yeah. Okay, Tiger. Yeah, how about Eric? Er he, Eric did. He, he teamed up with you for one of those. Yes. Uh, Eric can play. Yeah, he can. I think the ace in the hole for me this year is going to be Lil Adler. He can't be getting out on the golf course a lot with three kids. <laughs> this, this, yeah, Lil Adler. That's, that, is a, that is an excellent yeah. point. Lil the Adler. fatherhood does have a way of, uh, of making your, your handicap. Uh, yeah, rise. You know, I'm worried about my daughter, to be honest with you, Ernie, because, you know, one kid is a real deal. Two babies got to be a real hard thing. I can't imagine three with Eric, but man, when she's going to have one that's like one, like a year old, and other one's like one or two months, man, that's going to be a handful. I mean, man, I can't imagine that. Got to have a strong three, husband. Three, three. Alia, pressure's on, it, dude. Oh, yeah. Three, you got to deliver. Man, he got three. Yeah. Dang. I had six, dude. It's doable. It was doable because you were always working. Cheryl Ann's the same. Oh, come on. Cheryl Ann's don't, the same. Don't paint me as some absentee father. I didn't say you were an absentee father. You come were, on, you, man. And, and you've been working a lot. Cheryl, oh, yeah. Well, Cheryl Ann and I, were a great team. Yeah. Yeah, she's the best player on the team. She is. Okay. Well, I, I will agree with you okay. a thousand percent on that. <laughs> no, she is. No, but, but man, I can't imagine having a, you know, being a mom is a real deal. Yeah, and it's going to be great. It's going to be going to be tremendous. Yes. So look at it on the positive, yeah. Chuckster. Next call. So, Charles, I just had a quick question. Uh, does a straw have two holes or one hole? Let me know. <laughs> Does a straw have one hole or two holes? It's got two. Oh, no, it's just one continuous hole. <laughs> you know, because, you know, when, when we're in Utah, I went to this J-Dog's place. 
Yeah, you had a hot dog appearance. Yes, me, uh, AJ Wilson, and Jason Tatum yeah. for Ruffles. For your <laughs> hot dog flavored Ruffles potato chips. Yes, which, um, man, that J Dog's place got some serious stuff too. Mm-hmm. They had the raw onions, they didn't have the chili. They had the raw onions. Cause you know I'm a raw chili, uh, raw, raw onion. onion chili. Oh, raw chili, <laughs> raw onions and chili dog person. Those hot dogs look so good, and you can tell they know what they're doing too, because they cut the hot dog. Uh-huh. See, that's one. Of, that's that's one they of the cut secrets. The hot dog. Oh yeah, you just sli- put little n- slices in it. That America. That if you're gonna have hot dogs, don't just cook a hot dog without cutting holes oh, the, in it. the diagonal little uh, yes yeah okay and that's, uh, that's when i knew like yeah they know how to cook well, hot these are dog. professional yeah. hot dog yes guys. yeah these are these are professional hot dogs because i'm a mm-hmm. professional hot dog eater right these people are professional hot dog cookers yeah but we had a great time with jason and asia get to the answer to the question how many holes does a straw have Well, because the, uh, the reason i want your j dogs is somebody asked me is a hot dog a sandwich no it's a hot dog Okay, so that's kind of the straw question. That's that's my answer right there. I'm not sure how to answer that question. Is it one hole or two holes? Is a hot dog a sandwich? Those are two one of those things you're like, oh, that's an interesting question. So you say. So hot what's d- the answer? I would say it's got two holes. It's got one on the top say, and one on the bottom. Yes, I would say a straw has two holes, and I. And I, if it's I, got I, three, you got a you got a problem. I still don't understand why you don't think a hot dog is a sandwich. Because there are sandwiches, and then there's a hot dog. Hot dog comes in one piece of bread. Sandwich is two pieces of bread. Oh, that's your criteria? Yeah. Two pieces of bread yeah. makes a sandwich. with stuff in between the two pieces of bread. Hot dog? It's hot dog bun. So what about, the, like, uh, uh, an Italian hoagie? That's I mean, a hoagie. It- that's one piece of bread. <laughs> See, man. See, now you got me confused. Wow, is that hard to do? Next call. <laughs> hey, Charles, this is Kendra Benikin out of Kansas City. I just want to remind you that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. I remember that you placed a bet on the Eagles. Sorry about that. Also, just wondering if you had any advice for number 87, Travis Kelsey, as he hosts Saturday Night Live. You were a pretty good host of that show, so maybe you had some tips for him. Thanks. I'm glad she called because you owe me a hundred bucks. But go ahead. Yeah, I do owe you a hundred. Make sure I pay you next week. Um, number one, uh, I did bet on the Eagles. And how painful was that for you? Really painful. I, how I, painful? Really painful. Because <laughs> I, 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 I was doing well in Vegas. Uh huh. And, and then did, I, I went for it. Was uh, so as well as you were? Did this negate how well you were doing, or no, even go no, over the edge? No, I actually ended up winning. I went. Nuclear though, trying to triple up, quadruple my winnings. Greedy. I was greedy. Greedy. But I want to give a shout out to my Eagles and just tell them, man, I'm proud of them. Jalen Hurts, Fletcher, you know, Nico Seriani, uh, you know, they had a great year. Uh, they, so, what's yeah. your advice for Travis Kelsey? Well, number one, I want to congratulate Travis and uh, Patrick and Coach. And I know Andy Reid and Patrick. I don't know Patrick that well, but I know Travis well and his brother Jason, who I, I hope Jason comes back. I know he's thinking about retiring, but, man, hey, you can retire forever, but you only get to be a great player for a short period of time. Uh, Saturday Night Live is one of the greatest experiences of my life, but, man, it is hard. Uh, it's, it's not a, just show up Saturday night and do a show. No, it's a it's lot of all work. all week. week. You're, you're taping stuff. Sometimes yeah. going off location to shoot stuff. Too. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let me give you a quick synopsis. So I don't know that I've ever heard you say synopsis. synopsis I don't think I did. So you show up Monday. <laughs> you show up Monday, and they put you in a room with 30 writers and all the actors. That must be cool. It is pretty cool, some of the crazy things, ideas. So everybody throws about three or four ideas at you. That takes about five hours. Because I say yes to everything. Like a writer say, hey, you got this? I say, yeah, yes. Tuesday, they have to have them written. They have to have a script and everything. And y'all just sit at a table with the actors who are going to be in the spot. Y'all read it. Table read. Table read. That takes about six, seven hours. I bet that's funny, though. I bet uh, you're howling. It is. 
Uh, so then they kind of make a decision what they like. And starting Wednesday, it's 10 to 12 hours a day of rehearsal. When's the first time you rehearse your monologue? I think you start that on Thursday. Okay. But you'd have 10, 12 hours every day from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And on Saturday, you go in like 9 o'clock in the morning. You rehearse to like 3 or 4. Then you have to do a show. Yeah, it's. I've always I've heard that. Yeah. I mean, you're actually doing the show, yes. but it's nobody. Only the only the audience there sees it. Yes, but you do like five or six or seven extra scripts, and extra, then some of those are going to get cut for the well, actual well, show. Well, well, a lot of them going to get cut because the, the the regular show is like really condensed. So you do like that show lasts like two or three hours. Then it's like an hour and a half break where y'all all get together. And I guess they got people looking at the audience and things like that. And they figure out what the people laugh at the most. Yeah. But they kick that audience out. And then they bring another audience in, the one that you do live on television. Right. But man, it the, the, the toughest thing is they keep changing throughout the week. And there's a couple of times you have like, two minutes to get dressed. So they take you behind this wall and four random strange ass women snatch your clothes off. You're standing there with just your drawers on. But for you. No, I have to buy drawers for that week, that one week. Oh, okay. So to, that's I, the I, one yeah, exception. That's you the do one wear exception. drawers when you do SNL. Yes. So the thing is funny. You have like two minutes because when you have a quick change, they Velcro everything. Right. Right. So they snatch it off. They're like, one minute, 45, and they're snapping the Velcro back on. And they're like, and sometimes you get out there with like three to five seconds to go. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a great week, but it is hectic. How good's the after party? The after party is awesome because I think everybody's totally exhausted. And you know you got to You just go for it. I mean, because like I say, it's a great week, but it's a long week. Uh, but man, it's a it's an honor and a privilege. That's some excellent insight into the just be ready. A, a peek behind the curtain of Saturday Night. I remember Live. talking yeah. to JJ Watt about it. He says, "Man, that was the longest week of my life." Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the great JJ Watt too. Next call, Charles. We want to know what are your favorite animals. If you could only spend, you know, like let's say one weekend a month with animals, <laughs> which animals would you like to hang out with? I love Thanks. questions like that. <laughs> well, you know, for me, it would always be little dogs. I don't like big dogs, but I like little dogs. I miss mm -hmm. my little dogs. Yeah, I know you do. I miss Mango and Yoohoo. You know, it's interesting. You have dogs now? No. You're not going to replace? I don't. You know, that's a dilemma. I was... I was really down and depressed when I had to put those dogs I down. I know you were. So... You know, I don't know if I don't want to repeat that cycle. Like, mm -hmm. it was really, like, and I'm not an emotional guy like that, but, man, it really hurt me. Because, uh, so I'm, I've been debating, like, you know, cause it, it, it's always going to be that same cycle if you keep getting dogs. First of all, you got to get two dogs. You, you can't have one dog. Mm -hmm. You got to have, the, you got, they got to have somebody to play with. So, as of right now, I would always say dogs, my brother. Um but I'm not a horse person. The only time I've ever been around horses, I've been shooting commercials. Um, but that's Anything it. less would be, would uncivilized. be uncivilized. You're exactly that's right. right. They're right about this segment. This is a long, long. Uh, we got some law stealers, uh, yeah. though. And we've got one more call. Hey, Chuck and Ernie. Josh from Eugene, Oregon. I've been a loyal steamer. And thanks to you guys for this podcast because it's uh, kept me smiling up and down the road for work. But I had to share a story with you, Chuck. I grew up, even though I live in Eugene, I grew up in Portland, and uh, as a kid, to say we were poor is an understatement. And so even though I was a big basketball fan and a big Trailblazers fan, I never got to attend a game because we couldn't afford it. But in middle school, uh, they had an essay contest, and the winner got a pair of tickets to the Tournament of the Americas to watch the Dream Team play at Memorial Coliseum. And uh, lo and behold, I won, and me and my dad got to go. So my very first basketball team was watching the Dream Team play, and I was so excited. And you guys did uh, pregame warm-ups. 
He goes, we're coming off the court, and me being a big Blazers fan, I was trying to reach out to Clyde Drexler to give me a high five, and I was like, Clyde, Clyde, Clyde. And he walked right past me, and you were the player that was right behind him, and you looked at me and said, that was rude, and you high-fived me. And from that day <laughs> forward, I was the biggest Charles Barkley fan. And to my dad's dismay, I, I would root for the Trailblazers, but anytime they played a team that, that you were on, I was rooting for you guys. So I just wanted to thank you, Chuck, for creating a childhood memory that has lasted all the way into my adulthood and a story that I tell forever. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. I oh, love man. stories like that, Chuckster, so awesome. because – it is. It doesn't take much. No, but it leaves an indelible mark on a like on a young fan's life. The yeah. fact that the fact that you reached out and did that, and he'll never yeah. forget it, and he still hasn't forgotten it. You know what's crazy? You know, I was watching uh, the golf last week, and this kid had a sign. He said, um, three goals in life: check heart transplant, two meet Tiger Woods." And I get, and I saw his cat at Joe Lacava. Uh, Joe Lacava. Joe, Joel, excuse me, whisper something to him. Somebody had got it on camera, and Tiger went and spoke to the kid. The kid's never gonna forget it. Yeah, and it was so cool for Tiger to do that, and it was awesome. I tell you a funny story about that Terminal Americas. <laughs> this one I knew Michael Jordan was crazy. Michael's the most competitive person I've ever been around in my life. So, me him. Chuck Daly and David Robinson go play golf one morning. We're playing Puerto Rico that afternoon. And so Chuck says, hey, guys, we played 18. Let's go. Michael said, I'm going to play another 18. Chuck said, we got a game tonight. He says, I'll be good. So we get to the, <laughs> we get to the game. This is how crazy Michael is. We get to the game and – we get, and she's like, hey, uh, David, you got this guy. Charles, you got this guy. Scotty, you got this guy. Michael, you got, got this guy. Michael said, no, I got, the, I got the point guard. He says, what? He says, I got the point guard. He says, you don't want to guard the two guard? Michael's kind of leaning down. Michael looks and says, like, I said, I got the point guard. He says some shit about me in the newspaper, and I'm going to get him. <laughs> and we're looking around like, uh oh, this little kid in trouble. Yeah. But it's just amazing how he played 36 holes of golf and he's guarding this dude like it's game seven. And he's talking, don't you ever say my damn name again. I never want you to. Hear me. I mean, and he's playing like, it's like, yo, man, we're looking like, I'm looking at Carl Malone. I'm like, yo, man, there's something wrong with this dude. Like, that's how competitive he was. He played 36 holes of golf, and this kid from Puerto Rico. Does, does anybody know, or was this a manufactured Michael Jordan thing, like trying to that's a pump good, himself up? That's a really Did good anybody point. see the quote, or was no, this no, like, no, he said something point. once. Yeah. But, it, but when he looked up at Chuck, he said, Chuck, I said, I got the, But it was hilarious. Yeah. And, but the way he was guarding this dude, it had to be true, because he's talking the whole time. Yeah. But I saw what you said about being a newspaper. Now you got a chance to prove it. And he's doing that drill. <laughs> well, it wasn't me. It was him. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. But, yeah, so that term of America, you know, obviously Portland means a great deal to me because of my affiliation with Nike. Yeah. And uh, I didn't be with it. But what's really crazy about it, we talked about it. Remember when Dane Lillard, Lillard bought me the check? Mm -hmm. for my $1,295 that I paid to go to Portland for the summer. Because <laughs> I wanted, because my first preference to get traded was to Portland. Uh, actually, probably three years before I got out of Philly. Uh, but my first choice, uh, I said, if, if I can go anywhere, I want to go to Portland. Because I thought Portland had the best fans in the NBA. Uh, they were amazing fans. Uh, but it worked out good. I ended up getting, about three years later, I went to the greatest place, Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, you know, the caller earlier, you know, you're talking about Phoenix. Hey, man, I am really pumped for Kevin Durant. Yeah, let's see it. It's going to be awesome. I hope he's able to bring them a championship. It'd be great for my city. Uh, you know, he's a great, great player. We got Booker. I would love to see Chris Paul wear the championship. Can't wait to see how this all plays oh, out down man. the stretch. That's this is sure. going to be amazing, the NBA playoffs. Hey, in the course of this show, we have talked about uh, little Henry, your son. Yes. Okay. Uh, I We have a, a message from Henry, though not little Henry. Ooh, are you confused? 
Henry. video message. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler, and I'm wishing Charles the happiest of birthdays. What a wonderful thing, Charles. Uh, you're, a, you're a writer, Charles Wilson. You're a politician. You're... What a wonderful basketball player <laughs> and commentator you are with a great sense of humor. And I'm very proud to wish you the happiest 60th birthday. Man. How about that? That is so cool. You know, he's on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. He's on my bucket list. You know what's crazy? So you've never met. Uh, we've never met. Uh, growing up watching him as the Fonz. Can, it, give me your best Fonz. Hey, boy! It, if, if that had uh, been uh, if that had been actually the the Fonz, then Happy Days uh, would have been canceled after uh, two weeks. But you know, you know what's so amazing? I've never heard a bad word about him. You know what he's great into? What? Barry. Barry yes, I knew oh, you were going to say. Oh, what a great show! But, but he's made, with our buddy he, Bill Hader. But I've never heard anybody because I, you know, because people know that I'm a big fan of his, and it's like, oh man, he's a great guy. When you get to meet him, you're going to love him. And it's that was really cool for him to take time to do that. Yeah, yeah. what Come a on. great what a great uh, segment that was, Cap. Uh, oh, you, for you I, thinking of taste, you know like what you know what we should do? We should have the world's largest Chuck's answering machine segment, and it delivered. So, uh, well, so kudos so, to you, Cap. So was, excellent selection of calls. So what's really awesome now? We got the All Star Game behind us. Yeah, we do. Now comes the this to be. It's the fun part of my life. Because uh, All-Star, once it's over, full steam ahead with March Madness. Yeah, a couple of weeks of NBA and then March Madness and then the playoffs. Yes. Wow. Hey, I cannot wait. Because March Madness, man, nothing can screw up March Madness. Not even you. Not even me. It's the greatest thing of the year. That's another edition of the Steam Room with uh, Charles Barkley and Ernie Johnson. Thanks for all the calls, Law Steamers. Yes, we appreciate you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye.